I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Question in the comments from Trinitri9345. Is it possible to make grungy background textures in Inkscape? If so, can you show us how? I said, yes, I love this idea. It's actually going to be two Inkscape tutorials in one. First, I'll show you how you can make this vector background, and then I'll show you how to do a distressed text effect like this. So let's begin. Usually we start with this A4 template for the page. You can find it here under Document Properties or go to File, Document Properties, A4. This just puts us all at the same scale. It's easier to work together. But today, let's mix it up. I'm going to grab my rectangle and let's make whatever size project we want for this background. You can drag it open wherever you want. Or if you want something precise, go up here in the control area. I can change it to maybe 550 for the width on millimeters, and we'll do 350 for the height. Inkscape lets you resize the page to whatever your project is. Just go back up to either the icon here or file document properties. See this button here, resize to content. Click that, and now it's a custom page. This will help if you're building and Inkscape crashes. We'll be right back. My new thing is I'm trying to show a more realistic workflow rather than highly edited, so we'll leave that in. I was doing this rectangle here, and we'll go back up to Document Properties and choose Resize to Content. No crash this time, we're good to go. And now I was actually gonna get some inspiration. What I did before this when I was practicing is I typed in Grunge 90s album covers, and I saw this brick wall type of look you notice a lot of them were black and white with maybe one highlighted color. I actually lived through this time period. I was in high school. I remember looking for flannel shirts and Nirvana being on MTV on loop. So we'll use that today. This is our first rectangle. I'll do Control D to duplicate it. Just grabbing the handle, I'll drag it in. So it's the same color. It looks like nothing's happening. I want to have kind of a two-tone, maybe one-third, two-thirds about there. Let's open up the Fill and Stroke menu, Object, Fill and Stroke. I have the smaller rectangle selected. I'll just lighten it, maybe around there, just to have a contrast. We're going to go Mixed Media to get the brick backdrop. I found this image on Pexels.com. I'll have the link in the description below. I'm just dragging it onto the canvas. Get this pop-up. We'll do it. We'll embed the file. No rendering. OK. There it is. Takes a second. And I'll just hold Shift and Control to resize it just about where we want it. I'm resizing the brick wall, cheating by stretching it. It can bleed over the edge, but I want to keep it looking simple. Now, I did try Trace Bitmap to pull out the darkness. It didn't look quite as right. Instead, if you haven't seen this before, down here on the Blend Mode, I have the image selected. Change it from Normal, hit the Delta, and look for one that is called Hard Light. That's what I want. So it looks a little bit less high fidelity. Back then, we didn't have 4K capabilities at our fingertips, and even the way media was shared was different. So I like this less precise look. I'm going to lock it in, though, because I want to make the workflow go easier. Go up to Layer and choose Layers and Objects. If you've never seen this menu, it's pretty helpful. Layers and Objects. Layer 1, that's the only layer we have. And Image, if I change the eyeball, That'll take the image away. If you're asking, what is image two? That's just the intro image I had put together before. So back on image one, if you lock this, now I can't move it. Well, I moved the thing beneath it. That's my point. Control Z to get it back in place. Now for the part, I think the original question is asking, how do you create the distressed grunge look? I'll pull in another image. This I found also at pexels.com. Just dragging it onto the canvas, OK. This is a big image. It might crash. You probably want to resize it before bringing it into Inkscape. I'm going to keep it as is in case you're following along. I'll go up to Path, Trace Bitmap. And if you've never used this before, if you're on Single Scan, Detection Mode, Brightness Cutoff, this is your preview. Trace Bitmap will say, based on this image, I'll pull out the darkness. And this threshold, you can change how much it will pull out. Let's go way lighter, almost 0, 0. 0.085. Let's take it down to 0. 0.045 if I can get there. 045. This is what I'm going for. I'll do Apply. There it goes. OK, we didn't crash. 
I'll drag off the new vector asset over here. This is what we collected and we'll delete the original. To show you what I mean, this distress is actually made up of many, many nodes. It says 359,000 nodes. And if I go to edit paths by node, there they are. And one simple trick we can do to reduce the number of nodes is go up to path, simplify. Okay, it did it. If I go to the selector tool, it'll tell us how many nodes we're down to. We're down to 3,971. That'll help us now I can Hold control and reduce it down to where we want it. I probably did a time lapse there. I reduced the new vector asset, stretch it to the page. Now I'm gonna go back to fill and stroke menu. And I don't want this side to be super dark. I wanna instead do linear gradient. The default takes it from the original color black all the way to transparency. Instead, I'm gonna flip it here with this reverse the gradient. I don't want it to be transparency instead I'll change the alpha slider, which is opacity, to full opacity, and I'll manually change the color to something that looks good. Right in there, light, light gray. I wanna add one more feature, we'll do that rose. This time I got it from rawpixel.com, dragging in an illustration from public domain. I'm not gonna use the red and green as my pop of color. I'll do path, trace, bitmap, stay on single scan, brightness, cutoff, Let's, oh, that looks good. What was that? Try 0.27, apply. Oh, that's great. Delete the original. I'll hit this and get the turn handles twisted a little bit. If you don't want extra nodes, stuff like this down here, double click on it so you get the edit paths by node and see all the nodes like this. If you hold shift, you can gather as many nodes as you want and delete. For my rows, I'll go back to linear gradient. This time I'll start, the original gradient will be gray, and I will let it fade off into transparency, but I want the direction of the linear gradient to be diagonal. Go to your button right here, gradient tool, and we'll change it so only up here is full opacity, and this will fade into obscurity, like that. I want it to be worn away. Someone spray painted it on there and it kind of just faded out. That looks good. Now for our pop of color, I'm gonna grab a star, star and polygon tool. I'm choosing star five corners. It's still using the same gray we had. Let's change that color to something yellow orange. When you mess around with the gradient, sometimes your new objects will come with transparency on them. See down here, opacity. Take away the transparency, you can restore it back to 100% opacity. And here we have our humble star. I'm gonna do one of the path effects here. So we'll do path, path effects. This one is called tiling. It's an easy way to do what I wanna do here. The basics say three rows, three columns. Let's do 12 rows and three columns, enter. And I wanna adjust it so it doesn't look so perfect. I'll go to scale 25% and choose this last button random. See, that just changes a little bit. You can also do a 20% on rotate, mix it up, turn it diagonal. I'm using this as my color pop, but I don't want it to be just so much in your face. Let's go back to blend mode. If you're on the fill and stroke menu, blend mode, you can change it to one that's called color. See that? It kind of like burns in there. I like the way that looks. All right, there's the background. Let me show you how you can make the grunge distressed effect on text. We can reverse engineer it. This right here I made just by typing in grunge background. The typeface is enter V, which is just a free Google font. It was set to heavy and I'm gonna guess 200, close enough. One of the first tutorials I did, I showed you how you can adjust the kerning, the space between the letters up here on spacing. We'll do negative 15 that comes together, but did you know you could also do it by holding Alt when the cursor's between two letters, Alt, and then use the arrow keys to make it go further apart, or up and down. So the up arrow brings it up, down arrow brings it down. So you can create your own mixed up, looks like it was an old fashioned printing press that was out of alignment. So that's how we got it to look jumbled up like that, but how do you get the distress if I click on it, 
clear that out first. If I click on it, this is done with a simple mask. I'll go up to Object, Mask, Release Mask, and you'll see what I was using. See this? It looks familiar because I pulled these nodes out of the original distress thing we used. All you do is you take the nodes you want. It could be anything. It could be a print, could be a pattern, could be just distress like this. Put it on top of what you want to create the effect on. I'm changing the color to red just so you can see that it is in fact on top. Let's put it back to black. And all you need to do is click and drag over both of the things. I can see the text is selected and the mask. Go up to Object, Mask, Set Inverse Mask. There you go. Now you've got your distressed text up on the background and you're good to go. Thanks for the comment. If there's something that you'd like to see done in Inkscape, I'll see if I can get to it and I'll see you next time.